Welcome to the Tennessee Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Drury University. I will share my screen with you guys. There we go. Um, so my name is Nick Burkhart. I'm the Tennessee rep for Drury University. Just a few uh, opening remarks about lovely Drury. Uh, we're a small private school in Springfield, Missouri. Um, it's kind of nestled in right next to our downtown area. You can so, see we have a beautiful campus uh, right now. The leaves are turning orange and red and it's, it's a pretty sweet place to be. Um, just a few, a few highlighting things. Um, some of our key majors are our Masters of Architecture program. That's one of our babies on campus. It's a very unique program that attracts a lot of out-of-state um, out of state students to such a um, high-profile program. Uh, Pre-med, um, five-year MBA, and software engineering are other key uh, majors and master's programs that um, are bringing in some more Tennessee um, students. So those are just a few that I want to touch on. Um, a few on the screen here, uh, we are NCAA Division II. We have 22 teams that's growing year to year uh, with emerging sports coming in. Um, we have 70 plus programs other than the key ones that come from Tennessee. Uh, and then just with our student faculty ratio, we have uh, small class sizes, a lot of personal attention, but one of the big things on there is that we don't have TAs. Um, we don't have large, um, large classes. We have very small class sizes, a lot of personal attention and the experts in your field that you are studying in are the ones uh, that are going to be teaching, um, instructing, and grading your um, papers. So every time I talk to a student, I challenge them to um, any rep that they talk to from any institution, find out what is important to them and what makes them unique and uh, different from any school out there. Uh, at Drury, it's Drury Fusion. Um, Drury Fusion does a really good job of combining um, what we consider profession and life or what most consider, at least in the workforce, as a work-life balance. So with millennials and Gen Zs really focusing on a work-life balance that's extremely important to us, um, we wanted to create a structured education that really supports that growing function. So Drury Fusion offers three certifi certifiable components, credentials and certificates. Uh, we'll talk about that later. That's the fun part of Jury Fusion. Uh, real world experience is something that's very valuable um, and actual experience is hard to find. Um, all of our students go through an internship. That's kind of the baseline, um, baseline model for us. But the actual experience within looking at uh, entry level jobs, it's, it's hard to find even three to five years of experience that they're asking for um, so finding actual experience while you're in school is very important. Um, last one is life-changing life mentorship through our Compass, our Compass program. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, experience is just a few examples. I won't go through all of them. There's too many to count. Um, but curating ancient artifacts, um, designing city ordinances, presenting research, or presenting um, anything for that matter is, is really big with our students, um, especially with research and some of their major projects around the city. Um, and then developing things for schools, especially Springfield Public Schools. So life-changing mentorship uh, comes from the Compass Center. We have really a squad of advisors and life coaches um, that also combine with career planning development that are in your corner um, within your uh, academic interest and your career life planning. We want to be um, in your corner and have that team of advisors uh, ready for you as soon as you step on campus. So here's the fun part, certificate analysis. Each certificate is four classes. Um, and so this is kind of how we shape our gen eds. Uh, if you think four classes, that's 12 credits. Um, most students take two certificates. So 24 credits-ish uh, really adds up whenever you're looking at uh, classes that you would normally think of as just filler classes that I have to take. But 
um, this gives us some excitement in something that's usually boring. So four classes, three of those will be skill development, uh, and then the last one is a research project, a uh, research component, capstone, independent study, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so just a few examples. Um, this is Diego. Diego wants to design buildings inspired, inspired by ancient temples. Uh, of course, loves Greek mythology and Comic-Con. Diego Story Fusion, he would be a Masters of Architecture student, as mentioned before. Um, his certificates would be Ancients Alive, studying Greek mythology and graphic storytelling, where he'll probably create a um, online or digital po portfolio with a um, comic book or new graphic novel. Uh, Daisy, Daisy wants to work in the healthcare field as a physician or physician's assistant. Uh, we see a lot here at Drury. And Daisy also plays soccer and has a few leadership roles in student council. Daisy Story Fusion would be biology by way of the pre-med track. Her certificates will be holistic health and well-being, um, kind of nav navigating the struggles of an ever-changing medical field, especially with COVID, and looking at what a post-COVID world would look like. Um, that, that's one of our more popular certificates as well as sports leadership. Obviously, having 33% of our uh, student body is athletes. Uh, that's very, very popular. So all these can be found at jury.edu. It's, um, it structures them within profession and life. There's eight profession and eight life, 16 total. And that'll give you a grasp on um, why whenever you look at different jury ads, we say that we have uh, just about 50,000 different combinations between majors, minors, and certificates. Um, so the, uh, the well-rounded individual um, definitely comes out within our curriculum and our programs that are coming to jury. So just some closing remarks. Uh, it's free to apply. We kind of um, took away some you know, hoops that students have to jump through to, to get their stuff in. Uh, we are test optional, and uh, but the best way to get a hold of us and start that process is just to apply our applications uh, pretty easy and uh, pretty stress-free. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the Q&A, but uh, thank you guys for being here. Have a good night. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Samford University. Hi everyone. Let me get my um, screen up here. Can you all see that? Looks good. Okay, great. Thanks. My name is Laura Lauder. I am the admission counselor for Samford University. I actually live in Middle Tennessee. Uh, my territory is Middle Tennessee in the state of Kentucky. Samford is a liberal arts university located in Homewood, Alabama, just right outside of uh, Birmingham. We've been around since 1841 and we are the 87th oldest uh, higher education institution in um, the United States. So as right now you're in a college search, you're trying to find that right fit. Uh, my job is to see if Samford is the right fit for you. So there are questions you want to ask. Uh, what is it about the institution you're looking at that stands out to you? Uh, what problem do you solve? What is it that you want to do uh, beyond your college years? Do you want to continue your education? Uh, what impact do you want to make? And our faculty is dedicated to helping you uh, make that impact in the world. And what are your three top priorities as you're looking at an institution? Like I said, we are a liberal arts institution. We are a Christian university. Uh, it is the core of who we are and everything we do, but it is a very welcoming environment to all individuals. Um, if growing your spiritual uh, faith is important to you, we set the table for you uh, to uh, give you the tools to grow your faith and make it your own. Uh, we are a Division I school. We have over 17 NCAA Division I sports, 166 student organizations. We have 14 Greek letter organizations, over 177 major minors and concentrations that you can um, study. And 97% of our students within six months of graduation are either uh, employed or in their graduate study program. 
We have now over 5,700 students after welcoming our largest freshman class ever. Like who knew during a pandemic that we'd be able to do that. 70% uh, of our students are from out of state. Uh, we have 48 states now represented in 30 countries plus the District of Com Columbia. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. All our 90% of our professors have the highest degree possible in their area of study. So you are getting the best of the best. And none of our classes are taught by TAs. They're all taught by full professors. Uh, we have intramural sports, 50, over 50 study abroad programs in 13 different countries and know that 43% of our students study abroad. So our path forward during this pandemic, uh, we did survive the Spanish flu, so we know that we're gonna survive this one here. 86% of our classes are meeting in person this fall. Uh, we do have application, a test optional uh, option for you to apply, uh, but if you have a test score, we would love to see that. And then we also have a lot of vir virtual opportunities, but we are running campus tours six days a week. And our goal is to connect and learn with you. And we want to meet in person uh, safely, of course, whenever possible. So just a timeline, uh, applications open are big. We start rolling admission in November 1st. And December 1st is our first uh, scholarship deadline, along with uh, the FAFSA deadline being February 15th. So what are we looking for? Uh, application, your essay, official test scores if you have them, high school transcript, and academic recommendation. Just so you know what 50%, the incoming 50% of our class looks like, ACT score from a 23 to a 29, an SAT score from 1130 to 1350, and a GPA of 3.48 to 4.1. Scholarships, we take a holistic approach. We look at everything. Uh, there's, we don't have a grid system. We have some deadlines here. Uh, all fully admitted students to the university do uh, receive some type of scholarship. And then we also have need-based as well. Like I said, we try to make Stanford as affordable as we can to all people who I believe are called to be there. And we base our scholarships on our previous uh, year's uh, pool of students. So if you're a senior and you've applied, this is your application status page, which is very important. Um, your story is val valued. We are, um, our motto is for God, for learning forever. And I'm gonna flip here real close to the information page. If you have any questions and you wanna get in contact with me, there is my information. And um, I would love for you all to come down uh, to campus. We're also having a virtual prospective student event on October 25th, and that information is online. Feel free to contact me, call, email me, or text me, and I uh, put your uh, questions in the Q&A, and it was great to spend time with you, and I apologize for my dog barking in the background, so have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, just a reminder to send in any of the Q&A questions that you have, and now we'll be hearing from the University of Missouri. Hi friends, I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, should be good to go. Um, my name is Catherine. I am uh, the Tennessee admissions rep for the University of Missouri. Uh, I am located here in Columbia, but I've been traveling uh, the state of Tennessee and with the Office of Admissions for the last nine years. So very familiar with where you guys are coming from. Um, to kick things off though, we are going to talk about Columbia where we are located. So uh, Columbia is very much your typical college town. We've got about 117,000 permanent residents here in the city. Um, we are centrally located not only in the city of Columbia, but in the state as well. Uh, we are directly halfway between St. Louis and Kansas City. So about six, six and a half hours from the Middle Tennessee area. Um, but being centrally located in the city of Columbia is one of the things that our students love most. So uh, we're directly next to downtown and that's what that photo is there. Um, it's really great because it's basically just an extension of campus. Our students can kind of go back and forth all day long, lots of places to 
you know, sit and study, hang out with your friends, lots of coffee shops and locally owned restaurants. Um, there's a movie theater, concert venue. It's really great because, you know, you don't have to get in the car and drive 20 or 30 minutes down the highway uh, to get to a different part of town and separate yourself from school. You just have to walk across the street, which is really nice. So um, our students really love, you know, the close proximity we have, um, you know, to the heart of our city, which is really great. Uh, but here on campus, we have about 30,000 total students. Uh, we have students from every county in Missouri, from all 50 states and 120 different countries. And a big reason why we draw students from, you know, all over the country and all over the globe is because we are both the uh, land grant and AAU institution. And what that means for you as a student is that you get a research one caliber institution at a land grant price. And we'll talk about affordability here in just a couple seconds. Um, this year, we are accepting test optional applications in addition to our regular applications. So we work on rolling admissions if you're applying with a test score. It takes us usually about two to three weeks to let you know if you've been admitted. Uh, test optional decisions are going out um, once a month, usually around the first of the month. So um, either way, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get that decision to you in a, in a timely manner. Uh, you can apply through our normal website or you can apply through the Common App. Either one is completely fine with us. Just know that if you do submit through Common App, it does take a little extra time for it to actually get to our office. So um, just, you know, make sure you build that time in uh, if, as we get closer to scholarship deadlines. Uh, but when you submit that application, you'll be able to indicate your major uh, on that application. Um, here at Mizzou, we have over 300 different degree programs. So journalism, business, and engineering are our top three, but with such a wide variety of programs, there's really something here for everyone. Uh, we also have a med, vet, and law school on campus. So if you're thinking of maybe doing one of those post-grad uh, programs, you can definitely do your undergrad and you know, med, vet, law school, or even another master's or PhD program here uh, on our campus and do everything all in one place. Uh, getting involved is a really big deal here and we make it pretty easy with our over 600 different student organizations. Uh, we have everything from ballroom dancing and bass fishing, uh, Super Mario Brothers Club, uh, eSports, I mean, you name it, whatever it is you're interested in, we've got something for you to get involved in here at Mizzou. Um, as far as sports go, we're division one, we play in the SEC. Uh, we were looking forward to playing Vanderbilt this weekend, but unfortunately the, we are postponing that to December and probably going to have to postpone our Florida game as well. I think it may already be as well, um, but we're excited to maybe play football sometime in the near future. <laughs> um, another big part of our degree programs and another thing that sets Mizzou apart is the Missouri Method. And this is our hands-on approach to learning that was born out of our School of Journalism. So um, no matter what it is that you choose to major in, you will have uh, hands-on experience built into your degree program. So some quick examples, education majors are put into a classroom as early as their sophomore year. We want to make sure that they actually like children and want to be around them all day long uh, before, you know, they get their degree and they're in front of a whole classroom of kids. Uh, our broadcast journalism majors get to work for an NBC affiliate. We are the only school in the country that's allowed to own the local NBC affiliate. So they work for NBC for at least two years. Um, so incredible experience for them. And like I said, regardless of what you major in, you will have that hands-on experience built into your program. Um, to touch on scholarships and affordability, we have automatic competitive and departmental scholarships that students can uh, qualify for. Our automatic scholarships are awarded through the July test date of your senior year. So you can send as many test scores as you like. We will also super score all of those that you uh, send to us. Um, just, or I guess all of them that you have taken with ACT or SAT, just make sure that your super score is on the score report. Um, if perhaps you don't qualify for one of our scholarships, uh, we're really lucky that the state of Missouri makes it simple for students to become residents independent of their families. And that'll basically allows you to start paying uh, in-state tuition during your sophomore year. So saves about $17,000 a year, super uh, you know, popular option amongst our out-of-state students just because it is a pretty easy process um, in, you know, you're saving a ton of money. Uh, we began hosting campus visits in a limited capacity back in August, and we welcome you, you know, to come and see us if you're able. Uh, we know that traveling isn't an option for everyone right now, and so we've really expanded our virtual uh, visit opportunities. You can meet with academic departments, uh, current students, you can take a walking tour of campus with a current student, so lots of options for you to get to, you know, know Mizzou better either in person or from the comfort of your own home. This is my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free, shoot me an email, give me a call, um, whatever you need, that is what I am here for. So uh, feel free if you have any questions for me, drop those in the Q&A and I will get those answered shortly. That's all I got, thank you. Thank you. Next we'll be hearing from Mercer University. 
Hello, everybody. I hope you are all doing uh, well tonight, and I am happy to share a little bit more about my home at Mercer University. I have both graduated from Mercer and I'm currently a graduate student at Mercer as well, and so they just can't get rid of me. I absolutely love it here. So some of the reasons why I love it. Um, Mercer is and a little bit about who, who we are. Um, we are a private institution, an independent private school in Macon, Georgia. So we're about an hour south of Atlanta, but Macon itself is a wonderful city to be a part of and to live in. It's one of the main reasons that I didn't leave after I graduated um, because we have about 150,000 people that live here. Um, it's not really a college town as much as it, it is a really great central hub within the state of Georgia. It's a great place to uh, do internships and be a young professional in addition to uh, enjoying your college time. Um, there's lots of fun things to do in town as well. And more about Mercer as who we are. We uh, have 12 schools and colleges here, so lots of different major options, over 65 different undergraduate majors, but also graduate and professional school opportunities. We are a nationally ranked um, research doctoral university, so if you want to continue your education here at Mercer, then we can definitely help you in that vein as well. Because we're a smaller school, we have about 3,400 undergraduate students, 8,900 in our total enrollment. Uh, that does mean that your classes are gonna be smaller and you get to have really close relationships with your professors. They become your mentors and your guides throughout your time while you're at Mercer. And I think that's incredibly important uh, for who we are as an institution because you get to grow as you're in yourself, but also grow within your discipline um, and whatever you're interested in studying here at Mercer. While you're doing that, uh, you get to have hands-on experiences as early as your freshman year, doing things like lab research and um, independent studies um, as soon as you enter the, our classrooms. So you don't have to wait until you are a junior or senior to get your hands on real research. You don't have to wait until graduate school to get to publish. We really wanna make sure that our resources are available to our students as soon as possible. And what you do with those resources is really up to you. But one of our favorite things to do with our resources is to make sure that our students have the possibility to share those with other people. We are very service driven as an institution. We wanna make sure that we are helping others. One of the main ways we do that is through what we call Mercer on Mission. Uh, and that is an opportunity for our students to go abroad and do research and service in another country uh, with some of our faculty and other students. So this could look like going somewhere like Rwanda and teaching business skills to widows of the Rwandan genocide so that they can support their families or you could go somewhere like Vietnam and um, our biomedical engineers have developed prosthetic legs that can be fit in the field and so you go with a team of biomedical engineers and physical therapy students and you go and you actually fit prosthetic legs on victims of landmines left over from the Vietnam War because about 2,000 people a year will step on a landmine in Vietnam and so Mercer has been going there since 2007 and at this point has fit over 15,000 people with prosthetic legs. So we really want to have high impacts in the communities that we're going to be a part of and really go back year after year to help others. Um, these Mercer on Mission programs are so wonderful to me um, because they're so accessible because while you are taking a summer class as a part of that and paying for that class tuition, you will be also um, given money for your flight. Um, so we will cover that flight um, as well as all of your food while you're in the country, all of your accommodations while you're there and all of your travel while you're there. So you don't really have to worry too much about the extra costs of the travel um, as much as just the class cost of going on one of these trips. So it makes it a very attainable way to study abroad. But we do love our study abroad opportunities. Um, so I studied abroad twice as a Mercer student and really do encourage all of you to take advantage of something like that, no matter where you end up going later on. We're really dedicated to that hands-on learning model so that everybody has an individualized educational experience while they're at Mercer. So this could be a student who starts off in a history major and starts doing research as soon as their freshman or sophomore year um, and is able to write two or three different research papers by the time they graduate and get to print um, get to present at both local, regional, and national conferences before they graduate. Or it could be a student who starts doing chemistry research um, as soon as their freshman year as well and earns a Goldwater scholarship um, as a rising sophomore. So we want to make sure that whatever you would like to do, that we are helping you in whatever direction is best for you. Um, no matter where you turn, there is always a new advisor to help you. Um, you'll have advisors within your majors, but you'll also have an advisor within the Center for Career and Professional Development who will do lifetime advising for you so they don't stop when you graduate they're there for you for the rest of your life. Um, we also have advisors uh, for pre-graduate stu students or for students who are interested in one of the pre-health professions. So you always have support while you're here. And I think that is absolutely vital. Um, if Mercer seems like a place that you would like to apply, um, in the middle of the page, you will see our um, average student profile. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're looking towards the application process. Um, 
We are a holistic school, so we will read your entire application, um, and we are going to be test optional for at least the next three years as our pilot program is going. Um, we are really enjoying reading the test optional applications right now, um, and it's been really fantastic to get to deeper dive into every application that we are, are reading each year now that if everything is test optional. If you have test scores and you would like to submit them, you certainly can, and we do super score. But if you don't have them, or if you have them and they aren't a good uh, representation of your actual academic ability, feel no need to submit test scores here at Mercer. Uh, the other change that we have this year is that our early action deadline has been pushed back to November 15th, um, but that is coming up, so just a month away now. So if you would like to apply early action to Mercer, that is non-binding, but does give you the best overall scholarship consideration. Every application is considered for a merit scholarship, so it's gonna be based on a holistic review of your application. And we're going to read that whole application and award scholarships based on the results of that application. In addition to that, we also have scholarship interviews for the top 10 to 15% of our uh, students each year. And uh, with those, you have the opportunity to earn up to full tuition scholarships, and we do offer five full ride scholarships per year in a partnership with the Strive Foundation. Um, so lots of great opportunities as far as financial aid goes here at Mercer. I work with all of the students across the state of Tennessee, and so I am here to help you. And we would love to see you come and visit campus if you're able to, um, but we also have some great virtual visit options on our website too. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll be hearing from the University of Southern Mississippi, and don't forget to send in any Q&A questions that you have. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I am Reagan Holder. I am the Southern Miss uh, represented, re representative for Tennessee. Um, and so I'm just gonna dive in a little bit deeper um, and talk a little bit more about Southern Miss. Southern Miss is located about four hours away from Memphis. Um, we're a public institution. Um, so we're also considered the hub city um, of Mississippi. Um, we're the midpoint between New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, um, and Mobile, Alabama. So um, in both directions, they're about an hour and a half away. Um, but we, we are a thriving city uh, full of uh, different things to get involved in um, outside of school as well. Um, we have a zoo that's uh, literally about five minutes away from campus, um, which is a really cool thing to escape from campus for a little while. Um, this uh, picture below is one of our, um, as our mayor for uh, the city of Hattiesburg, um, joining one of our sloth exhibits. So uh, fantastic opportunities um, outside of um, the university itself. Um, but Southern Miss was founded in 1910 as a small teacher's college. Um, and since then we've grown about 15,000 students um, between our Hattiesburg campus um, and our Long Beach campus as well. We have over 140 academic degree programs for you to choose from. Um, and we're also located on one square mile of campus. So it's a perfect mid-sized um, university for students. Um, we have smaller classroom sizes, which is fantastic. So we have about 22 to 25 students in a classroom um, with 17 to one ratio of faculty ratio with students. Um, so you're getting those hands-on experiences with your faculty members um, and diving deeper in you know, class topics and everything like that as well. Here's some academic points of pride, things that Southern Miss is uh, pride um, and recognized for as well. We're one of the na nation's leading research institutions. Um, we're among 1% of universities worldwide accredited in both business and accounting. And we're one of only 40 public institutions accredited in all four areas of arts, so that's your music, art, dance, and theater. Um, our nursing program is one of the top ones in the state of Mississippi. Um, and we have a 100% post-graduation employment rate as well. Um, we're also ranked 13th in the nation to produce the most certified teachers as well. Uh, this is my one of my favorite uh, parts is the student life here at Southern Miss. Um, you're really getting so much more um, out of just academics, but you're getting um, just a, a full family here at Southern Miss. Um, we have over 220 types of organizations uh, from student government to outdoor activities to sorority and fraternity life, um, as well as we have a Quidditch team, um, which is a fun thing as well that students get involved in. Um, and then we have study abroad opportunities in over 20 countries. Um, so we have semester longs, 
uh, summer uh, study abroad opportunities. And then we have a Chateau program um, for three weeks during our um, intermission classes. Um, so tons of things to get involved in. Um, we also have some really cool Southern Miss traditions here at Southern Miss. Um, one of my favorites, uh, if you see the students uh, in gold paint, um, Welcome Week uh, students will get um, covered in gold paint and paint our Eagle Walk located under our football stadium. And it's just a cool, fun atmosphere here at Southern Miss. Here's how to apply. There's four easy steps. You'll fill out an online application fee that takes about 10 minutes to fill out. You'll pay a $40 application fee. And then you'll also submit your official high school transcript and your ACT and SAT scores. And if you go to that link below, it will directly to, uh, send you to our um, application link. Here's our automatic um, academic merit scholarships. So students um, that fall in between a 21 to a 23, that is our baseline for academic scholarships with a 3.0 core GPA. Um, this also refers to out-of-state students as well. So um, you'll receive 2,500 annually. And if you re receive a 26 and a 27 on your ACT um, with the um, equivalent also with the ACT scores, um, you get half off of tuition. And if you fall in that 30 or above, you get full value of tuition. Um, as well. Um, students must be admitted before our priority deadline on December 5th um, in order to be considered for these scholarships. Um, here's another special thing that I love about Southern Miss is our scholarship opportunities. Students that are admitted to our university have full access to this every single year, um, but students that are coming in for the first time will fill out a general application. Once they submit that general application with leadership and um, opportunities, things that they were involved in in high school, they will be matched to over 900 types of scholarships um, located on this uh, scholarship website. Um, we have competitive scholarships um, and designation-based scholarships as well. And if you um, go to this link below, usmacademicsworks.com, before you're even admitted, you can actually search keywords to find um, different applications that we might have for things that you might be involved in currently um, at, um, here at Southern Miss. Um, so we're all open full for campus tours. Um, we have two types of tours. We have a Discover Southern Miss tour, um, which is your basic tour of the university. Um, and we are all also offering Saturday tours as well every other Saturday. Um, next Saturday is also um, the next upcoming tour date for a Saturday tour. Um, academic sessions can also be paired with your Discover Southern Miss tour, which you can meet with a faculty member um, in the department that you're getting your degree in as well. Um, here's some upcoming deadlines. December 1st is that really big deadline for students to be admitted for scholarship considerations. And this is my contact information for you guys to reach out to me. I'm here to serve as a liaison between you and the school. Um, so feel free to follow me on USM. Uh, underscore Reagan uh, for more updates about the school. But thank you so much for letting me talk to you guys tonight. Thank you. Just a reminder to send in any of your Q&A questions. And lastly, we'll be hearing from Loyola University, Chicago. Thank you. Um, I'll be just sharing my screen. All right, well, first and foremost, good evening. Uh, my name is Chase Wilson. I am an admission counselor from Loyola University, Chicago. One of my territories is the entire state of Tennessee. Uh, first and foremost, I just wanna thank you all for taking the time to be here. So feel free to ask any questions you can think of, um, but I will get started. Okay, so Loyola is a Jesuit institution. It's actually the largest in the country. Um, Pope Francis is a great example of a Jesuit. Uh, the Jesuits are the largest order of Catholic priests. Uh, their main mission is to provide holistic education uh, while promoting social justice. Um, and the term cura personalis is here, means to care for the whole person, and that is truly the foundation of what we stand for at Loyola. Um, Loyola's goal is not only to care for the whole person, but to also care for the entire world. Um, so you get a chance to really serve and volunteer for the community in your backyard, which is the Rogers Park area, uh, the Chicago area as a whole, or even take one step further and get to serve abroad. Um, just a couple of examples. Uh, Loyola for Chicago is a volunteer service program where students work in teams. They go out and serve, work with children, people experiencing homelessness, veterans, and more. 
Um, and these students are, are providing uh, reliable and consistent assistance to Loyola surrounding communities. Um, another example is our Ignatian Service Immersion Program. These are mission trips that occur either on your spring and summer breaks. Um, this includes students and faculty, so you can go out and serve in areas like El Salvador, the Dominican Republic, um, and even Belize. So those are just two um, opportunities to get, take advantage of just volunteering and serving. Um, outside of that, the Loyola community itself, um, Loyola is a mid-sized university, so a little over 17,000 students total and a little bit over 12,000 being undergraduates. So being a mid-sized university, this gives you the opportunity to have smaller class sizes, the average being about 26 students. Uh, so you really get a chance to know your professors and vice versa. And then at the same time, you're provided with the resources of a large university. So D1 athletics and hundreds of clubs and student organizations to choose from. Um, another highlight of the campus community is our diverse student group. All 50 states are represented and actually 121 countries. So you, students get an opportunity to interact with people from all over the world every day, whether that's in class or just on campus. Um, with 41% of our students identifying as people of color, there are a plethora of organizations uh, just really there to support. One includes the Office of Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs, and they offer alliances such as the STARS Mentorship Program that gets a chance for incoming freshmen to get mentored and, and uh, paired with upperclassmen, just helping them get adjusted with that, with that transition. Um, another major pillar is our religious diversity. Uh, so 55% of our students are Catholic. Uh, we have a daily mass that's held here in the chapel. Um, outside of that, the most popular is the student run mass that's on Sundays at 9 p.m. Um, Loyola supports students identifying of all faiths though. So on the second floor of our student center, we have the hall of faith. So that's where you can find our Jewish halal group, Hindu students organization, uh, the largest run mosque in Illinois, Protestant ministry and more. Um, and I'll just touch on a little bit more about Chicago itself. Um, so Chicago, third largest city in the country. There's always opportunities, whether that's in the workforce or in your social life. Um, and you actually get a U pass. So that's your um, public transportation pass that gets you on all 100 buses and eight train lines. So it's really your golden ticket to the entire city. Um, Loyola also encourages students to really explore the city and that includes like discounted tickets to sporting events so, like the Bulls, the Cubs, the White Sox, the Bears. Um, with your uh, campus ID card you get in free to the Art Institute. Um, there's also the Lincoln Park Zoo that's one of the largest free zoos in the country and outside of that there's thousands of restaurants, a Ferris wheel, um, over 70 museums and you you really can never run out of things to do in the city um, but if you do you can also study abroad um, and we have over 100 programs there and um, we actually have two direct centers one is in Vietnam and one is in Italy um, and if you have any questions on that feel free to use the Q&A box um, but I'm going to dive into the freshman application process so we are on a rolling admission basis we don't have early uh, action or early decision um, we are on our website, luc.edu, or the Common App. Um, the other required materials outside of your application is an official high school transcript and a recommendation letter from a teacher or a counselor. Uh, the optional pieces are test scores. So we are test optional for the exception of uh, nursing and engineering students, and also a resume and an essay. So if you'd like to do that, we still recommend it. Um, if, you, you know, if you'd like, we consider everything. We have a holistic review process as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really up to you as far as those three options. Uh, to the right, these are the um, current freshman class. This is what they were admitted with. So this is the average GPA on a weighted scale. And then the test scores are on the right as well. Um, a major deadline is our December 1st priority deadline. So um, if you'd like to be considered priority for our scholarships, that's where you would go. Um, and that's really all I have. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is here, my phone number is here, and I hope you all enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we have a few extra minutes, and I would just like to invite anyone to submit Q&A questions at this time and uh, invite all of the reps to come back on to do a round of q and I'll just ask everyone to please share their favorite event that happens on their campus. We'll just go again in order from the previous presentations and everybody can take about 30 seconds to share. You can go ahead and start. 
Awesome, thank you. Um, one of my favorite uh, events here on campus actually happens after move-in day. It's called Panther Palooza. It's kind of um, uh, kind of a cheesy name, uh, but we have really good barbecue throughout the uh, city that comes in and caters to us, as well as three or four ice cream different ice cream places um, that bring their their food trucks and uh, free food and uh, fireworks are are always a really fun always a really fun time, especially with new friends, uh, new groups. Um, and with everything being so new, um, it's it's fun to add exciting things into an already exciting time. But Panther Palooza is, is is probably one of our highlighted events. Yeah, um, at Stanford University, one of uh, my favorites is Lighting of the Way uh, at Christmas time, where they uh, decorate. It just makes campus look so beautiful, and all the students come out together, and uh, the president, and there's music, and it's just really a special time getting those kids uh, geared up before exams. Um, so our big thing here is homecoming. Um, Mizzou is the birthplace of the homecoming tradition. So, and I'm sorry to all my friends on here who've heard me say this a thousand times, um, but homecoming is a, is a really big deal here at Mizzou. Uh, it's about a month long, whereas, you know, in high school, it's like a week long. Um, this is supposed to be homecoming week, but obviously things are just strange, but um, we really, really love homecoming around here. So that's definitely my favorite event. Uh, one of my favorite events that happens on campus every year is called Real Talk. It's a series of uh, professors who will speak about a time that they had trouble in college to really normalize um, having trouble in college so that you can relate to your professors more deeply um, and so that you can go to them when you have trouble and find someone who is relative to you. Um, we also have a student edition where students who are upperclassmen will talk about the struggles that they've been through and how they've overcome them as Mercer students. So it always makes me really proud to see what our students and professors have gone through and overcome. Uh, yeah, so one of my favorite um, events that happens on campus um, happens kind of throughout the semester. Um, we have puppy days um, where we will bring um, puppies from the local animal shelter um, and students just have a, a great time. It's a great stress reliever. Um, so we'll have it where you can play with the puppies on our lawn as well. So it's a, it's a fun time here at Southern Miss. Um, I, I would have to say I've actually just started at Loyola in January, so I haven't gotten the full campus experience, um, but this past uh, start of the fall semester, we had our virtual welcome week, so that was interesting, but they still made it um, pretty, pretty involved for the students. So um, like incoming freshmen, they, of course, they had the involvement fair, so they still got to meet with different clubs and organizations, but virtually we had breakout rooms and things. Um, there was like a virtual 5K, and they even had virtual tours of the museums and the, the Chicago um, life itself. So I think that's probably my favorite so far. Awesome. Well, if anyone has any remaining Q&A questions, go ahead and submit those now. Um, Thank you all for joining us and thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, when you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. This was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to check out the full sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings on the same website where you registered. So thank you all. Looks like there are no Q&A questions left, so bye now. <laughs>